imagined the gorgeous animals gone. The luscious plants gone. Our home gone. Planet Earth gone. The environment that we exist in, the place that we are surrounded by every day is vanishing. The animals, the trees, the air, the humans, gone. Why is this happening, you might ask? It is happening because of us, the ones who need nature to survive, the ones who can't live without it, the ones who live in it every day, us, humanity. I am incredibly concerned about the most important issue of our generation. The topic we need to fix before it is too late. The problem between humans and the environment. The topic of climate change. One day, my dad left to work leaving the BBC News on the TV. While I was eating breakfast, the reporter intrigued me. I couldn't stop listening to the Earth's climate problems. I listened very intensely, becoming more alarmed with every sentence. I learned about the Earth's temperature increasing, the sea levels rising, acid rain descending, and pollution intoxicating our cities. Even as a 12-year-old, I know how important climate change is and how we need to deal with it before it gets worse. We don't get a second chance with our planet. There are clear links between the rise in the human population and the advent of climate change as a cause of concern. The rise of climate change became more evident in the 20th and 21st century when human population increased rapidly from 1.2 billion in 1850 to 7.7 .7 billion in 2019. One important factor that has contributed to climate change is the greenhouse effect. According to NASA, the greenhouse effect is when pollution causes an increase in the amount of heat and sunlight trapped in the Earth's atmosphere. This process occurs naturally. If it didn't, humans could not inhabit the Earth. The greenhouse effect is letting greenhouse gases absorb sunlight from space and capturing it only to release it through the atmosphere to warm the Earth up. Without the naturally occurring greenhouse effect, Earth would just be an icy wasteland. Industrial activity, the release of naturally occurring methane gases, poor agriculture and farming practices, fishing, irrigation, littering, deforestation, just to name a few, contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon dioxide, <coughs> methane, water vapor, and chlorofluorocarbons are the most abundant of these gases. Everyday activities such as creating items, littering, and even breathing contribute to these emissions. CFCs and halogen gases create a chemical reaction that results in the ozone layer molecules to break down. The ozone is a gas that contains a high consolidation in a thin layer of the atmosphere. This prevents a significant amount of sunlight to burn our planet. With these gases reflecting the sunlight in all directions of the Earth, it causes the ozone layer to deteriorate. Without the ozone's protection, the sun's ultraviolet rays have more ability to cascade on our planet and heat everything up. Although the sun does give everything life, it can also take it away. The extreme amount of sunlight reflecting through the atmosphere causes many natural disasters that can destroy cities and even countries. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami was a massive destruction that affected 18 different countries, such as Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and Thailand. Climate change can also result in sea levels rising, as well as acid rain, which is rainfall agitated by pollution. This not only wounds human civilization, but also different species of animals and plants. So how can we minimize the number of greenhouse gases we produce? I am confident we have all heard of renewable energy. 
Renewable energy sources are the best ways humanity has of curtailing the amount of carbon dioxide that is formed through fossil fuels. Renewable energy is a type of power generated from natural sources that do not deplete when used. Sunlight, wind, water, wave, heat, and many more are the type of antecedents you use to create renewables. Fossil fuel emissions are emissions generated, created when oil, gas, and coal are burnt together to generate power. This was the source of 37.1 billion tons of carbon emissions in 2018. That is equivalent to 67 million elephants, which is why it is extremely important to adopt sustainable energy in our lives. Twelve countries around the world have relied on renewable energy for more than 65% of their electricity. Kenya, for example, is a country with limited resources and for most of its history had relied on other countries for electricity. The Kenyan government wanted to change this, so they invested heavily in geothermal and wind energy. If Kenya can switch their energy consumption from fossil fuels to renewables, then surely other nations with significant wealth and knowledge can do the same. Although sustainable energy is great for the Earth, it alone won't be enough to see the long-term decreases in emissions and stop the rapid rate of climate change. So what are some basic activities we can do to help decrease greenhouse gas emissions? Taking public transportation diminishes the amount of pollution caused by taking personal vehicles. By making use of our country's extremely efficient public transport system, we can slowly chip away at the 2 billion kilograms of carbon dioxide produced every year by cars. We can also add more greenery around the house. This not only helps minimize carbon dioxide, but provides us with our central source of life, oxygen. And finally, we should always recycle. By keeping the terms reduce, reuse, and recycle at the back of our minds, we can cut down the amount of trash we make, find new uses for rubbish, and reuse raw materials. This helps minimize the greenhouse gases released through ocean pollution and landfills. Doing all of these basic activities does have a significant contribution to the decrease of climate change. These are all everyday activities we can do. But what are some unique ideas that scientists are working on? Little did I know that some of our body's heat can actually be ca captured and converted into electricity. The City of London uses this technology to obtain energy during winter. This idea has also spread to, uh, to train stations and other shopping centers such as the Mall of America. And here's an interesting fact. In 2014, Sweden's airport custom services confiscated over 184,000 gallons of illegal smuggled alcohol. They didn't want to waste it, so they converted it into biomass, which helped power over 1,000 trucks, buses, and trains. There are many other ways we can tap into our natural energy sources. The Corio Victoria, for instance, is a type of jellyfish that has a large globe, which helps power medical nano devices. The green fluorescent protein in the jellyfish is used to create miniature fuel cells which have power these tiny devices. Doing all of these basic activities can and will benefit the Earth in so many positive ways, but only if we put them into action. Tackling climate change is the most important issue facing humanity at the moment. We've only got one Earth. We need to protect and defend it. A warning from the United Nations states that if we do not do anything in the next 12 years, climate change could be irreversible. We won't have any protection from, from the sun without the ozone layer. Our fate is not yet set in stone, but we need to do something before it is too late. Without the ozone in the atmosphere, we will experience floods, acid rain, ever-increasing natural disasters, and the death of many animals and plants. We will suffer dehydration, starvation, and lack of homes. So I urge you to make a change after leaving this room. We have a responsibility 
to future generations to take action to save our lonely planet. Humans hold the key to a healthy environment. To ensure we still have one, we will need all the passion, love, and determination we can muster. Thank you.